Hello and welcome back to CS11. This is lecture number five. I'm going to be talking about conditions and logic centered around the if and else commands in C++. Previously, we've seen that a computer program is made up of several pieces, including input and output and processing of information or data. And one type of processing that we've done previously is calculations. We've done arithmetic operations, you know, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. And in the uh, CMath library, we've done other uh, operations such as powers, square roots, and trigonometric functions. But there's another type of processing, and that's doing comparisons that I would like to talk about today. This is an important part of processing where the computer can examine values and then based on that, execute a series of actions or not, or an alternate series of operations uh, based on the results of that comparison. In order to test some kind of condition, we're going to need to know about a couple of different things. And the first thing is a logical expression, also known as a Boolean expression. Previously, we've seen arithmetic expressions, such as 4 plus 5, that in this case would evaluate to 9. Today, we're going to talk about logical expressions. This is an expression that evaluates to either being true or false. And if you want to get technical, in C++, true or false is actually equivalent to a 0 or non-zero value. In order to construct a logical expression, we need a different type of operator than we've used before. We need what are called relational operators. And relational operators allow us to relate one value to another. Relational operators in C++ include greater than, greater than or equal, less than, less than or equal. The test for equality, which is two equal signs written together, Remember that we used one equal sign on its own for assignment, so two written together is the test to see if two things are already equal, and exclamation point equals for not equals. And visually, that's supposed to remind us of the mathematical symbol for two things not being equal, which looks like this. But in C++, we don't use that symbol. We use these two. So greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, equal and not equal are the primary relational operators that um, we're going to use. So, in order to construct a logical expression, we need to use one of the relational operators and then relate two values together. Imagine that we have an integer variable named sum, and then let's imagine that we put some interesting value in there through the use of input or some kind of numeric uh, equations, and now we want to test sum. Of the logical expression that we might write, would then compare sum and use one of the relational operators, for example, greater than or equal, and then some other value that we want to compare it to. Could be a, another variable, or in itself an expression, or a value. Okay, so here is a logical or Boolean expression. This is something that the computer can examine and determine is either true or false. Now, how can we use that to cause part of our program to execute or not execute? And that is to combine this logical expression with the if command. And the if command is followed by a logical expression, and then opening brace, and then a closing brace. And now in here, we can list commands, any commands that we want, such as cout, sum is 100 or greater, and line. Now, how does this work? Well, when the computer gets to the if command and sees that there's a logical expression here, it evaluates it. And if that condition turns out to be true, then it will execute these commands here between the opening and closing brace. I'll say here, executed if true. 
Oops, spell true correctly. Now, what if this is false? What if we say sum equals 20? Then this is false, and this command here does not get executed. Now, in either case, the if command, although it's a little bit more complex than the commands we've seen before, is still just a command. And after it's executed, the computer would then continue on executing whatever commands followed it. Now, so in general, we might say that the if command looks like this. Okay, a logical expression and then one or more commands. Now the if has an optional else clause written this way. And we can also put commands in here. And if you uh, have both the if and the else, then this logical expression will be evaluated. And if it's true, we execute those commands. And if it's false, we execute those commands. It will always be one of those two. It can't be both and it can't be neither because this expression here has to be either true or false. Those are the only two possibilities. All right, so that's a quick overview of logical expressions. Let's write a quick test program in order to demonstrate that. All right, let's make a program here. We'll create a variable called grade. It's going to be a double. And we'll say, what is your final grade? And here we'll say 0 to 100, semicolon, OK. Oops, let's make sure I got that line correct. Can't quite see it. Got the semicolon. Let's add that. OK. And now we'll do some input, grade, and now here we'll do a comparison if grade is greater than or equal to 90.0, see out you earned an A. Okay. I've saved this as lecture05.cpp, and now I can compile it. And we'll run the program. What is my final grade? 55. Ooh. All right, well, let's do some extra credit, and we'll raise that up to a 92, and notice I earned an A. You can see in this case, the program responded differently, and it didn't do this. All right, let's add an else clause to our if statement. Okay, well, this is, this is a silly program, silly response here, okay. End line. Okay, save and recompile and run. What is my final grade? 55 and run it again and so on. Uh, we said the if command is just a command like any others and anything that comes after it is going to be executed regardless of the results of the if and else. So it's the commands that are located inside of the if and the optional else clause that are controlled by the conditional, but things that come after it aren't. Okay, now I'm here.
One other thing that I want to point about the if and the else is there's nothing that prevents you from combining them in various ways. The if, because it's a regular command, could actually come inside of an if-else clause, and we could have them come after, and we can connect them in various ways. So, how about this? If grade is greater than 90, then we do the code that's inside here. The code that we put inside here, how about if we do another if clause? If grade is greater than or equal to 95, see out you, you've earned an A plus. Closing curly brace, else, see out, oh, let's cut and paste that code, I don't want to type that again, all right, cut and paste, and save. Now, notice we're starting to develop quite a few braces and uh, here, and especially if they go over more than one screenful. One suggestion is to comment your closing braces and to remind yourself what they match with if grade greater than or equal to 90. So here I'll just put a comment so that later on, as if my eyes start to swim by looking at all of these opening and closing braces, that I can remind myself that this one here is supposed to match with this one here. All right, we'll compile the program and run. And a 99 gets me an A plus, 94 gets me an A, and an 88, oh, tells me to do some extra credit. Well, that's kind of insulting, but uh, that's a computer for you. No feelings. All right, well, that's a very quick tour of decision making, and we're just getting started with that, and we'll continue on with this topic in the next lecture. Thank you.